Hi everyone, and welcome to this new autograph tutorial where we'll be making this set of futuristic DNA strands in only a few minutes. Let's start by closing this project to make it from scratch, creating a new composition and changing the frame rate to 60 seconds. We'll add a new circle generator into the composition and press the T key to make the transform parameters appear so we can change the position parameter to separated mode and change the X position to negative 500. We'll add a math modifier onto this parameter. Its value will act as a sort of weight on this negative 500 value so that it gradually evolves from zero to negative 500. To do that, we can just change the multiply value from zero to one, but we'll add a current time generator to the value parameter which will make it change over time. We'll add a trigonometry modifier onto this generator. Its value is set to sine mode by default, which will allow us to make this parameter gradually move from right to left, even though right now this movement is minimal. We'll change the current time generator's multiplier value to 90 to make this parameter move faster with an oscillating motion. We'll apply the same type of modifications onto the scale by adding a current time generator again so that the scale changes according to the current time. We'll add another trigonometry modifier, but this time we'll set it to cosine mode. We'll set this current times multiplier to 90 because that's the value that was applied to the other current time modifier applied to the X position. The result of these two transformations gives the impression that we now have a ball that bounces from left to right. But if you look at the scale value, you'll notice that its value changes from one to negative one. To keep this oscillation, but shift all of these values upwards, we're gonna add a math modifier in add mode with a value of 1.5. So the minimum scale value is no longer negative one, but 0.5. So here, we're simulating a rotary motion that gives the impression that the shape is moving in a circular motion in perspective, approaching and moving away from what could be a camera. Now we can fold up this layer's parameters, duplicate the layer, and move the copy in time in order to get a second shape with a circular motion that accentuates the perspective effect. By choosing the right time shift, we get the impression that these two forms are revolving around each other. Now we'll connect these two shapes with a line by going to three seconds. Then we'll add a new constant generator and adjust its format to custom. We'll keep the negative 500 value, which was the initial position of the shape on the left and we'll adjust the top and bottom values to negative 10 and 10. So this way it looks like there's a bar connecting the two shapes and we'll change the scale to separated mode to have separate X and Y values. By playing around with this constant's X scale value, we can animate the line to give the impression that these two shapes are connected to each other. This animation will be guided by a current time generator again and we'll adjust the multiplier to 90 as well. To finish, we'll add a trigonometry modifier in sine mode. Solo mode lets us get a better look at this constant. The way that these three elements are synchronized really makes it look like they're 3D. Let's create a new composition and we'll add an instancer generator. Its goal will be to multiply this single strand of DNA in order to create a complete DNA strand. We'll open up the source parameters to access all of its settings and we'll use the previous composition as a template. Right now, nothing is visible because the dimension size is zero. But if we change it to 10, now you can see that there are 10 DNA strands on top of each other. We can activate the accumulate transform option and change the position values of these instances in order to separate them from each other. Let's start by positioning them 400 pixels away from each other, 
and disabling clipping in the viewer in order to see outside of the composition format. Now let's go to the instancer scale parameter and change its size to 0.25. We'll move the instancer toward the bottom left corner of the composition and we'll turn it so that it gradually fills the entire composition format starting from the bottom left corner all the way to the top right corner. Now all of these DNA strands are synchronized and it looks like they're turning. We can spread them out a little bit more with a value of 500, for example. Now we can use a time offset to shift the animation of these strands in relation to each other. We'll activate the Accumulate Time Offset option and define an instance time offset that'll allow us to shift the animation for the rotation of each strand. We're just gonna have to change one small thing. So as you can see, the circular shapes that make up these DNA strands gradually disappear. That's because the initial elements from the first composition aren't displayed infinitely. You'll notice that each layer's block is defined by visibility keyframes, one at the beginning of the animation and one at the end, which doesn't let us see them outside of this block. By giving the time offset a negative value, we'll use the images from the first composition, which precede the appearance of these blocks. We could extend the duration of these blocks, but we'll use the ability to loop the composition instead. But before that, we'll reduce the duration of the first composition to 4 seconds. Here, 4 seconds represents a full rotation. Now we'll set the composition's before and after parameters to loop mode. At the time of duplication, when the instancer comes out of the 4 seconds, it'll just go back to the beginning of the composition and play it over and over and over again. Now we have an animation that can be expanded infinitely. We can of course readjust the entire instancer in order to better frame these DNA strands from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. But we can go even further by importing an image sequence into the project panel representing a technological element rotating on itself. The complete image sequence represents a 360 degree rotation. Let's change the frame rate of this image sequence to 60 frames per second so that it's consistent with our composition, and this will make the animation even smoother. Let's also change the frame rate of the composition with the instancer to 60 frames per second and go back to the first composition containing our main animation. Now we can just drag and drop the element from the project panel into these layer slots to replace the two circular shapes. Our entire animation will stay the same, but now it'll have a more detailed result. You'll notice, however, that the last image from the image sequence remains on screen after rotating. We can loop this animation by going into the reader parameters and changing the before and after parameters to loop mode. Now we don't have to worry about the length of this image sequence because by setting its playback in loop mode, the spheres will rotate infinitely. Let's move this constant into the stack so that one of these sphere elements goes over it. Let's go to the beginning of the animation to see which layer is above the bar and which one is underneath it. We can see that the sphere element in the foreground is actually at the bottom of the stack, so we'll switch the order of the layers. When playing the animation, the sphere element located at the top of the stack passes in front of the camera. Let's move in the animation to see the strand in profile and reduce the size of the constant. We'll apply symmetrical modifications, so for example we can set it to negative 380 on one side and 380 on the other side. You'll notice though that in the middle of the animation the sphere element is under the bar when it should be over it. To fix this perspective effect, we'll select the layer at the bottom of the stack and duplicate it. Now we just need to move the visibility keys that control the appearance of this block, so that it appears a little later and disappears a little earlier. We can add as many visibility keys as we want to make this element disappear based on this timing. Let's finish off by selecting the constant to add a gradient modifier onto it. 
we'll change it to reflected mode and move the first gradient point toward the right to recenter the gradient and set its opacity to zero. Now let's change its color toward a light blue or a bit of an electric blue. All the animations applied onto our basic shapes have been kept, but now we have a rendering that looks a lot better. If we go back to the composition using the instancer, we can see that the DNA strands have been updated with the changes. Now we can add a background through a constant or a gradient, for example. We'll change this gradient to radial so that we can gradually increase the radius. All that's left is to place this gradient under the DNA strands and change its central color to a dark blue or a more vibrant shade. Let's finish by selecting our instancer and with clipping in the viewer being disabled, we can see that it extends outside of the composition format and we can accentuate this by adding a tile modifier which will duplicate these DNA strands infinitely. The tile modifier has parameters called gutters that let us increase the distance between each duplicate. Now we can re-enable clipping in the viewer, maybe make these DNA strands a bit closer together by reducing the gutters, allowing us to produce a futuristic DNA animation that can be infinite in size and duration. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial, maybe another one on the instancer because it's just so versatile, it can be used for so many things.